All right, in this video, I want to just uh, finish off my second example of finding hydrostatic force. And in the first part, we set up the integral to find the hydrostatic force against a little circular, semicircular gate. And we got the integral from 0 to 3, density times gravity times 2 times the square root of 9 minus x squared times 10 minus x dx. So I went ahead and uh, jotted down a couple steps just to save some time here. So the first thing I'm doing is I'm just factoring out the 2 times the density times the gravity, so to give us this part. And then we still have the square root of 9 minus x squared times 10 minus x. Um, and then the next thing, I'm just pointing out a little notation. Sometimes you'll see books abbreviate. They'll take the density times gravity and write it as this other little Greek symbol. So I forget actually the name of it. Uh, but there it is, just so you see it. And then we're still integrating from 0 to 3 of the square root of 9 minus x squared times 10 minus x. So, okay. Um, again, remember our, our original units were in feet, so that's going to come into it at the end of it. Um, or you could even plug it in right now. Um, when your units are in feet, uh, what we replace, we replace density and gravity, or equivalently, this new little symbol. When uh, our units are in feet, we use 62.5. So we could even go ahead and plug that in there just to get rid of everything. Okay, so now the question, though, really is, how do we integrate the square root of 9 minus x squared times 10 minus x? So... Um, the first thing I would do is, you know, this this isn't something I I think I could do just right off the bat. You know, I don't I don't just look at that and say, oh, I know an antiderivative. Um, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to distribute out the square root. So we would get 10 times the square root of 9 minus x squared, and then if we multiply uh, the 9 minus x squared, the square root of that times negative x, well, we'll get negative x times the square root of 9 minus x squared. Okay, so what I recognize now to do this, um, there's two different ways. What I'm going to do, to do the second part, uh, the second uh, expression, this x times the square root of 9 minus x squared, this looks like something to me that we could do with the u substitution by letting u equal 9 minus x squared, because then du would involve the x, and hey, that would be great. So this uh, second part we could integrate using u substitution. The first part, there's two different ways to do it. There's something called trigonometric substitutions, which there's a good chance you have not seen at all um, at this point. A lot of times when this stuff is presented, uh, the normal sequence that you'll see in a calculus, you have not seen trig substitutions yet. If you've seen trig subs, you can definitely do it. We're going to talk about an easier way to do it anyway by interpreting it in terms of areas. So the moral of the story is we're going to bust it up. Okay. So let's see, we've got 2 times 62.5. Now I'm going to break this up. I'm going to integrate from 0 to 3 of 10 times the square root of 9 minus x squared dx. And then we can subtract away the integral from 0 to 3 of x times the square root of 9 minus x squared dx. Alrighty, so to uh, calculate the first part, um, what I'm actually going to do is interpret it in terms of areas. So again, 2 times 62.5. We could pull the 10 out front and then just have the integral from 0 to 3 of 9 minus x squared. Again, we'll have to do a separate u substitution for this other problem. Okay, and what I'm going to do, um, so to calculate the integral from 0 to 3 of 9 minus x squared dx, what I'm really going to do is I'm going to think about this geometrically. So if you think about, you know, what, if you think about the curve y equals uh, 9 minus x squared, what, what is that the graph of? Okay, you know, y equals the square root of 9 minus x squared, huh, I don't know, that doesn't, maybe that doesn't look too familiar. Um, one way that you can kind of maybe make it more recognizable, if you square both sides, well, we would get y squared equals 9 minus x squared. If you add the x squared over, we would get x squared plus y squared equals 9. And recall, x squared plus y squared equals 9, that's just a circle centered at the origin that has a radius of 3. Okay, well you have to be a little careful because if we go backwards, you know, so if we start with x squared plus y squared equals 9, if you subtract the x squared, well, we would get that. To solve for y, normally, you well, you would take the square root, but remember, we would get a positive and a negative is what would happen. Well, we're dealing with the positive part, that's what the function is. 
the positive part is just going to be the top half of the circle. So the graph of the square root 9 minus x squared is going to be the top half of that circle. All right, so far so good. Well, now we can interpret uh, this definite integral, though, in terms of areas, because really what we're doing is we're finding the area underneath the curve, square root 9 minus x squared, from 0 to 3. So x equals 0 is here, x equals 3 is here. So we're finding um, this integral would basically give us the value of this little quarter segment of the circle. All right, well, that's easy, because we know that the... Uh, the total area of the circle would be pi times the radius squared. Again, we know that this has a radius of 3. But again, we're not getting the area of the entire circle. Circle, We're only getting 1 fourth of it. So we would have to divide that by 4. Okay. So it turns out this, this uh, first expression uh, from 0 to 3, the square root of 9 minus x squared, uh, when we compute that, we're going to get pi times 3 squared over 4. All right, so we'll revisit that here in a second. We'll plug everything, uh, plug everything in here in just a moment. Let's also kind of separately compute this integral from 0 to 3 of x times the square root 9 minus x squared. Um, and again, you could kind of leave all this together, you know, whatever way on a test or a quiz or your homework, how you feel most comfortable doing it. I'm just trying to break them down here a little bit individually. So here we could integrate uh, by letting u equal the stuff underneath the radical, 9 minus x squared. Our du is going to be negative 2x dx. So I look at our problem and I say, well, there's an x dx still in there that I need to replace. So, well, I've got an x dx almost on the right side. To get it by itself, I could just divide both sides by negative 2. So I'll get negative 1 half du equals x dx. So now I'm going to use this stuff to relabel. Okay, so again, our x dx, that's being replaced by negative 1 half du. Uh, the stuff underneath the radical, that's what we're calling u. So really, we would have the square root of u. Remember, though, when we do a u substitution, our limits of integration change. Okay, so the original upper limit of integration was when x equals 3. Okay, so if x equals 3, to get our new limits of integration, we just plug that into our u substitution. So if we let x equal 3, we'll get u equals 9 minus 3 squared, or 9 minus 9, which is going to give us 0. So our upper limit of integration is just going to turn into 0. The original lower limit of integration was when x equals 0. So if I plug that into my u substitution, I'll get that u equals 9 minus 0 squared, or 9. So our new limits of integration would be from 9 to 0 of the square root of u, Okay, is what we're integrating. Remember, though, people are used to having kind of smallest to largest. Remember, you can flip the limits of integration. So we can just change it from 0 to 9, but you have to change the sign out front. Well, since it was negative 1 half, I can now write that as positive 1 half. I've got the square root of u which is u to the 1 half. And all right, finally, we're in a good place where we can compute this. So we would get 1 half. Let's see, if we integrate u to the 1 half, I would have to add 1, which is like adding 2 over 2. So that would give us 3 over 2. Um, then I would have to divide by 3 over 2. But dividing by 3 over 2 is the same as multiplying by 2 thirds. And then again, we're integrating that just from 0 to 9. All right, the 2 and the 2 we could cancel. So really, we've got 1 third. So I'm just pulling the 1 third out front. And then we would have 9 to the 3 halves uh, minus 0 to the 3 halves. Almost there. Well, how do you compute 9 to the 3 halves? We can rewrite 9 to the 3 halves as 9 to the 1 half cubed, right? Because if you multiply, we still get to the 3 halves power. Well, 9 to the 1 half, that's just the square root of 9, which is going to give us 3. So really, we have 1 third times 3 cubed. Well, you could even cancel out one of the 3's. Um, or you can think 3 cubed is 27 over 3. It looks like, to me, we're getting 9. OK, so now I think we're in a good spot to kind of plug everything in that we found. So originally, uh, this was the integral we wanted to compute. 
So I think we've got it now. It says you would get 2 times 62.5. We would get 10 times the value of the integral from 0 to 3 of the square root of 9 minus x squared. But again, we, uh, that's what we uh, evaluated by interpreting as, as an area. Okay, so the integral from 0 to 3 of the square root of 9 minus x squared. Okay, we said that that's going to be pi times, well, 3 squared is going to be 9 over 4. Minus, okay, then we would have to subtract away what we got for, for the integral from 0 to 3 of x times the square root of 9 minus x squared. Okay, we went through all of that when we said the integral from 0 to 3 of x times the square root of 9 minus x squared. Eventually we got that to simply equal 9. Alright, so that's what I'm plugging in um, for this part. We'll simply get 9. And notice uh, all the integrals are gone, everything's gone. Um, everything started off in feet. The force at the end of the day is going to be in pounds. Okay, so. Oh, I'm kind of getting pretty lazy here. I really don't want to multiply all this out and clean it up. I think I'm going to leave it to you. If you're in a Calc 2 class, uh, certainly you can multiply that stuff out. So definitely done the hard part, I think, uh, setting up the integral, evaluating the integrals. Again, kind of tricky because you're interpreting integrals in terms of areas. Um, you got to do u substitution on the other part. Um, again, you could do trig substitutions if you've seen those. If you haven't, you'll probably see them soon enough. So, all right, I hope these couple examples uh, make some sense. A little bit long, but uh, again, hopefully not, hopefully not too terrible. Kind of the same idea. Take horizontal slices, um, and then it's really the tricky part is just kind of expressing that generic area uh, in terms of x, and usually that's where the geometry comes into it. So, all right, um, again, once again, I hope it helps, hope it makes some sense, and um, if you have questions or comments, feel free to post them. Uh, hopefully me or somebody else can point you in the right direction.